We're going to go ahead and we're going to open up in prayer. And then we're going to get right to our Bible study for, for this month. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. For this opportunity to be able to come to your house, Father God, to be able to pull up to your table, Lord, and yes, eat the fat of the land, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for feeding us by your word today, Father God. Feeding us by way of your spirit, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we are all growing, Father God, that we are all uh, maturing in Christ, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that There is nothing that can come up against us because we are your children. Yes, Lord. And if you are for us, Lord, there is nothing or no one that can come, that can come against us. So, Father, we want you to know that we love you, Father God. Now, we given this teaching, Father, we pray that everybody will get an understanding from the youngest of spirit, Father, to the oldest. And that your word will be a breath upon each and every one of our hearts, Father God, forever. Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. Continue to Guide us, guard us, watch over us. Order our steps, Father God. Even in this teaching, Father, you take over. I, yes. I receive the mind of Christ right now. I surrender my, my vocal cords to you right now, Lord. I surrender my mind to you right now. Lord. Use me as you please. Watch over those who are on their way out, Father God. They will travel in grace. And Father, we just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, got a question. Benefit packages. How many of y'all at your job or at a job that you've ever been at have benefit packages? Amen. 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 Everybody, right? Amen. Most people, anyway. Amen. That's because most people are looking, you know, sometimes the benefit package will help you to determine if you're going to take that job or not. It can be two jobs or three competing, and they may get the same pay. But the difference will be the benefit package. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different things that come within that benefit package, right? Like insurance, retirement plans, paid time off, uh, additional compensation, paper just blew up about 40 times size. Uh, 40 times its normal size. I don't know how that happened, but it just happened. Let's go back. We're going to fix that. <laughs> All right. With the insurance, I mean, with the uh, benefit package, a lot of people are looking for what? Health insurance. Uh, with, with a lot of them, you get disability insurance, long-term, short-term disability insurance. You get dental insurance, vision, life insurance. Some of them even come with more stuff like retirement plans, 401ks. You know, a lot of people know about 401ks. People get paid time off, bereavement leave, paid personal days, paid six days, paid vacation days, paid holidays. Some people get to participate in stock, stock options. You know, because the benefit package has a lot to do. Once you start working for a company, the benefit package is something that is, per se, a bonus. It's something that really enhances you being where you are. Amen? Well, we have, some, we have somebody whose name is Jesus. Amen. 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 And with Jesus, we have the ultimate benefit package. I want everybody to go to Psalms 103, and we're going to start at verse 1, and we're going to read the translation. 
Not yet. You know, some of those benefit packages, they include free gym memberships. Some of them you can have commuter privileges. Pet insurance, remember that? Yeah. Some places have child care that they'll pay for. Some places have those, uh, what they call, company nap rooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fall asleep at your desk, there ain't no nap room, get out. But the thing is, the benefits always, they make the job more enticing for us. And not only that, but they help us because, you know, we may have family members uh, up, up under us, and we also add them to our benefit package. And so the job just doesn't pay for things that happen to my health, but it's going to pay for things that happen to my children's health or my spouse's health. Amen? Amen. And so it's always good to have those benefits. Are you there, Psalms 103? Yes. New Living Translation. We're going to start at verse 1. And it reads like this. It says, Praise the Lord, I tell myself, with my whole heart. This is a psalm of David. Amen. I will praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, I tell myself, and never forget the good things he does for me. Now, this uh, phrase here, good things, in the actual uh, Hebrew, this, this is benefits. Okay? Never forget the benefits that he has for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He ransoms me from death and surrounds me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Now the King James would say he, he fills my mouth. This here, this one in New Living Translation say he fills my life. Right? Mm -hmm. It says, fills my life or my mouth with good things so that my use is renewed like the eagles. In other words, it's talking about how you talk it. Amen? Right. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to get angry and full of unfailing love. Full of unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. Now, we know in the New Testament, when we come over to grace that uh, with God now, he, as the Bible says that he is love, we know he's not angry at any, at any of us, right? right? Amen. But this was David talking at the time. And David saw something coming before it got here. Amen. Remember, everything dealing with the, the Old Testament, dealing with the law and the prophets, we're all pointing to a Savior that was to come. Amen? Amen? It says, He has not punished us for all our sins. And we, we know that's, that's, we know God has taken care of us like right here, right? <laughs> he has not punished us for all our sins, about verse 10. Nor does he deal with us as we deserve. In other words, we thank God for his mercy, right? Amen. Amen. But his unfailing love toward those who fear him is a great is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our rebellious acts as far away from us as the east is from the west. How far is the east from the west? Far. They'll never touch because when you finally get to the east coming from the west, you are now in the west. They'll never touch because they continue to go, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. The Lord is like a father to his children tender and compassionate to those who fear him. That word fear there means respect, not afraid. Amen? Amen. For, the, for he understands how weak we are. He knows we're only dust. Our days on earth are like grass. 
like wildflowers. We bloom and die. The winds blow it, but we are gone, as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the to the children's, to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. I, I like the way it says that because that just, you know, a lot of people will use that slogan, God is in control, but the truth of the matter is God is on the throne. And if you go through the scriptures, you'll see that God has always given mankind control of this earth. And God has always worked through man to get things done here on this earth. Amen. Amen. So God is on the throne. He's always on the throne. Amen. He rules over everything. Verse 20. Praise the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty creatures who carry out his plans. Listen for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everywhere in his kingdom. As for me, I too will praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So if I had to give this study a title, the study would the title would be The Benefit Package of Knowing Christ. The Benefit Package of Knowing Christ. You know, well, most jobs, once you get on board, you know, there's a there's a wait time in order for you to indulge in the benefit package, right? But this this with Christ, all the benefits that he has for us. We don't have to wait no 90 days. We don't have to wait 45 days. We don't even have to wait 10 days. The very first day we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our benefit package has been activated, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, even though the benefit package is activated, just like a lot of people, we just got finished talking about everyone having a benefit package in their jobs that they've worked on before. One or another, you've always had a benefit package. But even though many people have had benefit packages, everybody didn't read their benefit package. Fine point. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone didn't read their benefit package. And when a person doesn't read what's in their benefit package, how are they supposed to know what's in the benefit package? Mm. A lot of times, what they'll do is listen to some gossip or something somebody else says on the other side of the room about, well, hey, our job will do this. If you if you uh, need a day off, you can use some personal time because our job says this. Then you take that time off and you put in personal time and then get kicked back. You don't understand why you got kicked back. And the reason is in your benefit package. If you ever get in your benefit package to find out what your job has for you, you will it'll take you a whole lot farther. You'll be able to use everything to your advantage, amen? In the same way, with the benefit package of Christ, if you ever learn what Jesus has given us in this benefit package, we, I tell you what, once we start uh, uh, working it, once we start putting it into use, there are some things that happens in our lives that will enhance us, that will help us, that will help others. There are things that will happen, as, 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 as the scripture said, that seems like it is the west is far away from the east, or the east is far away from the west. Your life would turn around 180 degrees. I didn't say 360 degrees, did you say 360 degrees, you'll turn around and please circle and end up right where you started. And that is not where you want to be. Amen. So we're talking about this benefit package, right? So Psalms 103, 1, and it said that, Praise the Lord, I tell myself, with my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, I tell myself, and never forget the benefits he does for me. You know, a lot of times we forget what God has done for us. Amen. We ask God in our prayers to help us, to mature us, to bless us, to protect us. 
You give us victory. You give us guidance. You give us wisdom. We, we're asking God these things during prayer, right? And there are some situations and circumstances that God has already delivered you from. You get it? He's already delivered you from certain situations and circumstances. And in the same way, now you come to a circumstance or a situation, and all of a sudden, you don't have the faith to believe that God is going to bring you through like he brought you through last time. The thing is, we need to know that we can look back at our benefit package and see what type of benefits we have. Do we have vision benefits? Yes. <laughs> Do we have health benefits? Yes. Do you have financial benefits? Yes. Do you have victorious benefits? Yes. What type of benefits do you have? Well, if you never get into the word of God, just like the word says in John 15, it says, if my word be in you, and you be in my word, then you will ask what you will, and he, was, and he said, I will give you the desires of your heart. Now, that's a great benefit to me. Amen. 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 But in order to do that, you're going to have to get into your benefit package and let the benefit package get into you. Amen. Can we understand that? Amen. You know, we look at we look at the Bible. We see John one and one, and it says that uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word wow. was God. Then we go down to verse fourteen, right? John one and fourteen. It says in the Word became flesh and did what? Dwelt among us. Don't you know that us being in this word, the word again is supposed to become flesh? Amen. Aren't you the body of Christ? Amen. This word is Christ. And so again, this word, we we are supposed to be one with this word. But if we don't get in there and we don't know about the benefits in there and the benefit package of which it opens the doors to, then we will never partake of those things. And I'll, I'll use an example. i use an example. One guy got really upset at me at the gym. Guy got upset with me at the gym. But we're not talking about it. You know, don't leave the church right now because we're about talking about finances, okay? Don't get up and leave, just relax. But uh, one guy went to some church and his wife went to the, to the church with him, or should I say, she was going to church and every here and there he would go with her. And she was giving her time, which was great, right? And he didn't believe in time. And so somehow something happened with that ministry in that preacher, whoever he was, standing up front, had, had stolen <laughs> a lot of the money from, from the people and from the church, right? And so when he did this, that instilled in this other person, this guy I was talking to, that, you know, hey, you know, hey, we shouldn't be given time because it's only going to the preacher, right? And I asked him, I said, well, you don't, you don't believe in time? He said, no, I don't believe in time. And then he really, he got upset with me because I said, I believe in time. And he got upset with me. <laughs> and so it really started to treat me like I was that preacher that took away his wife's money. I don't, I don't even know who your wife is. I, you know, I barely know you, right? But the bottom line is, I asked him, I said, how on earth can you know the blessing of the tithe if you never tithe? That's like saying that I'll never, I'll never eat that fruit, I'll never eat that apple. I'll never eat that apple because you know, I saw somebody get hit with an apple before and it looked like it caused somebody some pain. No, I would never eat that apple. I would never eat any apples, right? But until he tastes the apple, how can he possibly get any of the benefits that the apple has? The, the vitamin C, the, uh, you know, the, the fiber from it. How can he partake of those good things? How can he get 
the good things, the nutrients out of the apple if he never tastes the apple? How would he ever know that an apple is good if he never tastes the apple? And he just heard somebody say that apples were bad because somebody got hit with one and they hurt. You wouldn't know, now would you? No. In order for you to find out how good an apple is, you have to first partake of the apple. You have to take a bite out. You have to try it out. See if it's, if it's good to you or not. Amen? I mean, when we went to, uh, when we was out in the Bahamas, oh, oh, Badger's bump. Say, you need, you need to go ahead and try some, I think it was escargot. And I was like, man, I'm not eating no escargot. That's, you know what that is? That's, that, that smells. I'm not eating that. They can barely even get me to eat the dog or, uh, what's the, the, the squid? Calamari. The calamari. They barely can get me to eat the calamari. I don't know how they think they're going to get me to eat that. She said, you have to taste it first to see how good it is. And I, just the thought of snails, just the thought of it, I was, I was like, Lord, mm -hmm, I can't do this. I can't do this. Nevertheless, they talked me into it. I did. I was like, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> Man, I'm a, but you know what? I can sit back and talk about how nasty they are, but would I really know that until I've tasted them? Or I can sit back and say, oh, they're really good, and they're good for your benefit, but how am I supposed to know that until I taste it? Same way, how do you know how good Jesus is until you try him? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's all you do. Yeah, like a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, amen. But this is really good. It started out great already. Uh, you know, the benefit, the benefit uh, of knowing Christ. You said something earlier that, you know, about knowing the benefit package. Also, you mentioned that um, what God has done for you, how would you know how would you know what God has for you if you don't know what he's done for you? And I'm looking at it from this point of view that if you didn't know what happened when Christ died for us, you would never know what you have in front of you. Everything that, if, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got your benefit package. When you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you got your benefit package. It starts immediately. But you have to study the word to know how to work and then speak the right words to have these benefits in effect. They're there already, by grace. It's already there. But you, if you never speak that you're, you're financially free, if you never speak that you're rich, if you never speak that you're healthy, you're going to always believe that you're not. And then you're going to start speaking that you're not. Because you're thinking already, well, you know, I don't see it. Logic. Because that's the way people think. I got to see myself with all this money in my account before I can say that I'm rich. But if you already know that God says, according to his riches in glory, now you're talking about your father's bank account, not yours. But once you start speaking that I'm rich because my father shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory, you keep speaking that, you keep believing that, and then you'll start seeing it happen. And now you can tell somebody about your benefit package. And believe it in confidence. Amen. But you'll never speak confidently until you believe it, receive it, in order to know it. Amen. I just signed and then I caught that about how you said you'll never speak confidently about your benefit package if you don't get in there and Amen. find out about your benefits. You know, and that's a, that's 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 common at a lot of jobs. A lot of people don't know about their benefits and it's not because they didn't get the package, but it's because they never opened it's the package. package. It's the same way. Bibles are sitting on tables all across the nation right now, <laughs> collecting dust, never on being opened. And day. then people will tell you things, and they will say things like God helps those that help themselves, and they think it's in the Bible, and that has nothing to do with the Bible. Benjamin Franklin said that. Yep. But they think that, well, God said, 
God helps those, God helps those who help themselves. Wrong answer. And the truth of the matter is, they never got into their benefit package, so now they're going to have to pay more than the copay. Yeah. <laughs> you get it? They're going to pay more than the copay now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Elder. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're giving this study and that it's online for people to see because religion will have people believing that condemnation and the struggle is the benefits of Jesus. Mm. And so because they're always telling you, you going to hell if you going this or there, you got to stop, you a sinner, you did this and this and this and this. And like how some religions will tell you that you have to do the bow of poverty and all this other stuff and that the curses and everything is the benefits of Jesus. That you have to stop living, give up your whole life, and that's the benefits of Jesus. That you have to become poor, you have to dress like this bishop and this pastor here, you have to drive this, you have to give up all your finances to the church, you have to be in church 24 hours a day, you gotta pray 40 days and 40 nights, all this, all this nonsense. And they'll have them think that that's the benefits of Jesus. And, and one thing that we always say in here, which is forgotten of the fivefold ministry, is teaching. Religion don't want to teach. They just want to preach at the people. And I love that you give this because you are teaching. We are teaching people the benefits of Christ and, and showing his love and not showing condemnation and showing what the wall says that we are a no judgment zone. Amen. 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 I like that. Oh, go ahead, sis. Yes. This is really good. I love, you know, uh, the benefit package that God offers. Um, piggybacking off of what Elder Locke was saying, you know, so many people don't apply it to their life. And I love the fact that, um, you know, some benefits, you got to wait to the open enrollment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, God's Roman is, is, is open at all the time. Mm -hmm. It's up to the individual whether they want to, like you said, open this word, apply it to their life so they can receive those benefits. And then they ain't got to wait till fiscal year. That's right. That's right. Or that expiration date and reapply again. You know, it's up to the individual. You know, he, he give us that power of authority to make that decision. Amen. 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 Verse 3, he gives, he says, he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. So is that a benefit? Yes, it is. Is that a benefit? Because a lot of people, they hear it in the church that he forgives my sins. And then immediately when something happens, they, they revert back to, well, I'm a sinner. So if you forgave your sins, are you a sinner? Are you somebody who sinned? Yeah, everybody sinned. Everybody sinned and short of glory, right? But the same, the same passage that says that everyone sinned and falls short of glory, it wasn't meant to stop there. It's supposed to keep reading on. It says everyone sinned falling short of the glory, but in the same way, everyone can be righteous if they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So we all can be made righteous, right? So he forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. Do you believe that he has forgiven us from all of our sins? And what evidence do we have? Amen. Because we need to have some evidence, right? If you go before a judge, right, the, the judge and the jury, you can't just go up there and say he said it and she said it. You know, you can't do that. You can't. You have to have some type of evidence, right? In the same way, God don't tell you what you have. He doesn't give you the benefit package and don't show you the evidence. Amen. We've all, again, been brought from something. We went through something. If we look back over our life, we will be able to see if God brought me through that then, he's going to bring me through this now. Amen. Amen. I thought it was amen. 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 That, you know what? It's funny you go here because I've had this conversation literally in these last two days, four different times with four different people about, listen, if you're a Christian, I have to tell them now, there was no Christians before Christ. 
They were nowhere. They didn't know this. There was no Christians before Christ. So, everyone before Christ lived by the law, which is the law of Moses. Amen. And then you're talking about religion just running away with the law. And I had to explain to them about, you know, if you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a Christian. You are now saved by grace, not by the law. The law came to increase sin. That's what the Bible tells us. But we are free through grace. Amen. We're saved by grace. So because people don't go to Bible studies and Sunday schools and because there's churches out here that are not teaching and pre teaching the word of God through a, a setting of class. They're preaching the word at people, but they're giving them what they want to give them. They're not spelling it out where they can understand it. They're not spelling it out where they can go home and look for themselves and say, oh wow, I understand this now. They're gonna to continue to have these people come every week to hear sometimes the same thing over and over, but they come in every week to be preached at, to be condemned, to be judged, to be led astray, because that's what they're doing. The blind leading the blind. But when you get the word of God explained to you where you can understand it, as the word says in all of our getting to get an understanding, now you can understand the benefits of Christ. You can understand the benefits that we have by grace. And that's the love of God. Amen. Amen. Now, we're not talking about this evidence. I see back there. I talk about this evidence because we need evidence, right? Amen. And, and, and we need evidence that what we are looking for is in this package. Now, how many of you know that if somebody tells you that you, uh, when you're going to the doctor, right, the physician, and you come up to the desk and they say, do you have insurance? How many of you know that they don't want to hear nothing about your 401k? Come on now. See, you need to know what you're talking about. If you don't know the difference between health insurance and 401k, there's a problem. That's right. And it's not with your benefit package. The problem is with your understanding. That's right. Well, it's the same way in this word. Amen? Amen. That's good. That's good. You're looking for some type of healing, but you're asking for a financial blessing. It doesn't make sense. Well, if I get a financial blessing, then it help pay for my, my healing, and then I can... You know what? It becomes a vicious circle. Yep. So you need to know what word, what scriptures, what key will unlock the door for your answer. Amen. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, sir. Amen. I'm so glad you went there. Because when you read three, it automatically made me think of how religious folks, especially when the pandemic was going on and all that, they were throwing out Second Chronicles seven and fourteen, like like it was like it was the best thing since sliced bread, and we're and forgetting the uh, the first part that says if my people which are called by my name, you know what I'm saying? Where it says it will seek them out, turn from their wicked ways, and then I will heal their lands. We're, we're uh, in here in uh, Psalms where it's talking about he's forgiven all my sins and healed all my diseases. And, and it goes back to Paul talking about where, where the teacher is the forgotten part and stuff. And so they're not teaching about the benefits and they're not teaching about grace. They want to teach the law, which is never given to us. And so they're thinking that, hey, if, if we give them this, this is what's going to bring them back. This is what's going to help them, and this is what's going to save them. And like you said, then it's, they're up here giving the uh, 401k instead of giving their health insurance. They're they're helping uh, hinder people. They're they're giving them a um, let's let's say they're they're giving them a anthrax shot, <laughs> and, and, and they needed a shot for the flu. You know what I'm saying? So you you injecting them with something that they don't need instead of giving them what they need. You're giving them religion and giving them your opinion instead of giving them the word, which is going to set them free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, then you know he's telling the truth about, uh, what's it, 2 uh, Chronicles 7 yeah, 14. Yeah. It says, if my people which are called over my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I forgive their sin, then will I uh, heal their land. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing about it is, those, those scriptures, they were good scriptures, but what they were doing was pointing to who was to come. 
in, in, this, in the same way, because these, those scriptures like that, the, the Pharisees knew those scriptures. Right? They knew those scriptures. Law and the prophets. They knew those scriptures. And so what they did was they wanted to hang those scriptures over everybody's head just like people are doing today. Hanging those scriptures over everyone's head trying to make people fear or be afraid to, to you know, be who they are. And it's, it's causing people to miss out on what actually belongs to them. Because that was talking about, again, a savior was coming. All right? Now, with you all, is the savior coming? No, the savior is here. He's already come. Amen? And I'm not talking about the second coming of Christ. It's the second coming of Christ, we all coming back with him. Amen? I'm not talking about the rapture either, so don't send me no email. Uh, you got to watch for me, baby. But we need some evidence, right? You need the right key to unlock the right door. We need some evidence. You need to take the right, <laughs> right card when you go to the hospital. You need to have the right health card and give it to the right people, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So we got a little bit of evidence here. Because people believe, when people hear that their sins have been forgiven, but they don't really believe it. Why? Because in the same way, this very same entity that's telling them that their sins are forgiven, and I'm not talking about God or the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about people. People will tell you that your sin has been forgiven, but then they'll keep bringing it back up. They'll say your sin has been forgiven, and then they'll wait on you to do something else. That's not how God operates. All right, that's not how God operates. Psalms 32. Everybody go to Psalms 32. And I'm gonna read Psalms 32. I'm gonna read one and two from the NIV. Is that all right? Amen. Psalms 32. Psalms 32. Yeah. We're still under. Forgive all my sins and heal all my diseases. Amen. We're still under that right now. And we're trying to show some evidence, right? Do you believe that he has forgiven us from all of our sins? When I say he's forgiven us from all of our sins, is that just sin for tonight? Is that just sin from last week? That's sin how long? <laughs> all right, Psalms 32, 1 and 2. I'm going to read it from the NIV, and it says this. Blessed. Y'all know what bless me? More than happy. <laughs> Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. Blessed is he whose transgressions are what? Forgiven. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him. Right? Okay, so this is what the scripture said. Now this is Old Testament. Right? This is Old Testament. And this is uh, in the Psalms of David. And he's talking about, and they're talking about blessed is the man who sins that God doesn't count against him. Now, when David was here, could that be possible? No, that couldn't be possible. That could not be possible until we first receive our Savior. Amen. The only way that anyone's sin is forgiven or covered, period, is through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Remember, the blood of animals wasn't enough. In fact, the Bible says that he didn't want those sacrifices. He didn't want them no more. It wasn't enough. They did not do what they were supposed to do. It was one sacrifice that was right. And that sacrifice was done by Jesus once for all time. Amen? Once for all time. So, whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and whose spirit is no deceit. Let's go to Isaiah 43. And I'm showing y'all some old T stuff that's, that's pointing us to the New Testament because people don't believe you know, you tell folks that, hey, you know what? God has forgiven their sin. And people don't want to hear that. Oh, no. 
God ain't forgiving us. Look how they living. Look at their lifestyle. God ain't, God ain't forgiving that. I don't understand how people want to, how can I say, hold God to their, their little bit of wisdom or whatever it is they, they got. If you are living by the wrong testament, if you are living by the wrong covenant, to you, God is going to seem to be a hateful, wrathful person. Yep. Amen. You're going to feel like he's always mad at you. You're going to feel like you can never mount up to what he wants you to be. You're going to feel like you... What is the word I'm looking for? You're going to feel like you are so inferior that you can't even... You, you're not worthy to be in his presence. Now, in the Old Testament, we understand that they were not worthy to be in this presence. That's why they had the outer courts. When they built the, the, the tabernacle, they had the outer court, the inner court. Then they had the holy and the holy of holies, right? And so everybody had to be on the outer court, except for the priest. The priest was the only one that could go into the holy of holies, right? And when he went back there, if he wasn't right, he would drop dead. And they had to pull him out from under the out from under the uh, the tent. But back then the priests constantly, they were on shift, and they constantly were pleading for the people. Constantly making sacrifices for the people. No priest ever got to sit down. Never. They don't get a seat like old Pastor Jackson here. They had to constantly be making those sacrifices. But when Jesus made the last sacrifice, when Jesus made his sacrifice, after the sacrifice that he made, he did it once for all times according to the scripture. And then the Bible says, he, then he sat down. He sat right. down where? At the right hand of the Father. Why did he sit down? Because everything was already finished. What is it that you're looking for? Because it is already in this benefit pack. Amen. 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 It's already here. It's already been done. Amen. Uh, did I give you all another scripture? Isaiah 43 and 25. New Living Translation. Y'all ready? It says, I, yes, I alone, am the one who blocked out your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Hmm. So here, Isaiah is, 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 is writing, uh, he's listening to God, and God is saying, only he is the one who blocks out our sins. And he didn't just do it just to be doing it. But he did it for what? His own sake. His own sake. He, he didn't just do it. And that's the thing about a relationship. In a relationship, you just don't do something just for you, but you do something for all y'all. He did it for us and himself. Amen? Are y'all with me? Did I lose y'all? Hey, any questions, y'all know the deal. If y'all not understanding, somebody throw a question at me, I'll give you an answer. Amen. So we're still talking about does he forgive us for all of our sins? Because everybody don't believe that. Amen. People say they believe it, but they don't believe it. So now we need evidence. Okay? Isaiah 44 and 22. Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So now we're trying to establish exactly what the word was saying about our sins being forgiven. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 44 and 22. New Living Translation. Amen. Amen. Y'all there? Yep. It says, I have swept away your sins like the morning mist. Y'all hear that, right? Uh-huh. God said he swept away your sins like the morning mist. Does the morning mist come back? Not, not the same one. 
That's just like every day you look up in the sky. It is never the exact same picture. Every day there's a new picture. Why? Because God is just like that. Amen. 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 Once he does something, he don't have to do it again. He said, I have swept away your sins like the morning mist. I have scattered your offenses like the clouds. All return to me, for I have paid the price to set you free. Now, did Isaiah pay the price to set us free? No. No. Who came to pay the price to set us free? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. This is the prophet speaking about what was to come. Uh -huh. And when Jesus got here, he paid the price to set us free. Did he pay part of the price? No. Did he oh. pay just a smidgen of the price? No. no, he paid all the price. He paid, he paid it all. As they said, Jesus paid it all. Amen? And so he paid the price to set us free. Amen. Why are people afraid to be free? Some people feel like they must suffer in order to hear from God. They must suffer in order to to think that, that something is happening, God is actually working in their lives. God don't want you to suffer. Will we suffer? Yes, people go. The Bible says if you are if you live godly, you will suffer persecution. Yes. But you don't have to suffer in life. We're not supposed to be people who are survivors. We are supposed to be thrivers. Amen. 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 That is good. You know, I'm glad you went that route because God does not want us to suffer. He does not want us living in guilt. He doesn't want us living in shame. See, the thing is, we talked about this a week or so ago about people being institutionalized. <laughs> Religion institutionalized people. You know, by the way they preach at them and condemn them and, you know, bring their, bring their wrong to an open shame and all these things that God does not want us to do to people. God does not bring our sin or our wrongs to open shame. He says he's forgiven our sins and he'll never remember them again. Never. But we, ourselves, are institutionalized by the way we've been taught years ago and some not so long ago, some still being taught this way, but those that have been, um, that come to the knowledge of Christ and his righteousness and what he's already done for us. Now we can live free. We can get rid of that guilt conscience. We get rid of that the institutionalized thinking of, oh, oh well, you know, uh, Lord, please forgive me. You're asking him to do something that he's already done. You're institutionalized. Amen. Amen. Absolutely correct. I see you, sir. Amen. Um, and when we're talking about the teaching part, the one thing that I have noticed that religion does actually teach, instead of teaching you this word and to be like Jesus, <laughs> they teach you to be like them. Yes. They, they teach you to be like them. Be like me. Do what I do. And I love how Jesus told them, hey, do what those religious people say, but don't do as they do. But the religious people now, they, they, they teach you to be like them. Uh, separate everybody else. Don't act like those people. Those people are sinners. Like the one... Uh, the parable where about the the, uh, the publican up there uh, went up to the altar and the other guy was, was praying. He was like, "I'm I'm glad I, I'm not like that that sinner over there. <laughs> I, I, I've obeyed all the commandments and I've done all this, and they're over there so busy." And and Jesus even said in the word too, "You go you you cross lands to go and convert, and you turn them into twice the sons of hell that you are." And they don't even realize because they haven't even been taught. They ain't doing what Second Timothy says, study to show thyself approved. They going off what was passed down to them, the tradition and the religion, and passing it on to someone else, and teaching them how to be like them. And someone taught them how to be like that person and how to instead of to be like Christ. <laughs> so the Lord forgave your sins. He gave you for all your sin, right? Yes, sir. So if you if you do something or you make a mistake tomorrow or you sin tomorrow, <laughs> does that mean Jesus got to get back on the cross for you? No, sir. No. If that was the case, you know how many times Jesus has been up on the cross? He wouldn't even be afraid if he left to get up on the cross. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. And how often do God remember our sins? Jeremiah 31 and 34. I just want to show y'all the evidence. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 31 and 34, New Living Translation. Because if you ever go before a court of law, you need to have some evidence. If you ain't got no evidence, then why are you talking to me? You can't prove nothing if you don't have no evidence. Amen. So I'm trying to give you the evidence of the word so that you can, hey, Lord, I see what your word say. Let's do this. <laughs> the doors are open, amen? This is my benefit package. This is a part of my inheritance. Are you there? It says this in the translation. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their family, saying, you should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will already know me, says the Lord. And I will what? Forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. Amen. So how often will God remember your sin? Never. Okay, so he forgives your sins, and he forgives you from, from your sins and your wickedness, and so now you're waiting on Judgment Day, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> judgment Day already came. And this is what people are being taught, though. People are being taught that they are waiting on Judgment Day. Even though God has forgiven their sins, they're waiting on Judgment Day. So if you're waiting on Judgment Day, then you are saying that God did not forgive your sins. That's right. What you are saying is you don't believe in Jesus. You don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He shedding his blood on the cross was not enough for you. And so now, because you're so big and bad, you cannot sin his grace. Let me ask you this. Just as the scripture tells us how God, how he forgives our sins, he forgives us our wickedness, and he'll never again remember them. Does that mean that you're never going to do nothing wrong? No, it does not mean. Does that mean that you're never going to make any mistakes? No. Is that does that mean that you're never going to do anything against God? Because the truth of the matter is, anything you do against God is a sin. Does that mean that you're never going to do anything against God? It does not mean that. It does not mean that at all. No. What it means now is God just is not going to get offended by what you do because He knows you. Amen. That's what it means. He's not going to get offended by what you do because he knows you. He already knew that you have a weakness in this area. He already knew that you were going to fail in this area. He already knew that you were going to have problems in this area. Because he knows you. Amen? He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knew you. Amen. Amen. And you know it's sad that out of the mouth of people, they often say this, God knows my heart. They use that the wrong way. They use it the wrong it's way. So and it's sad because, yes, he does know your heart. He knows you have a wicked heart. Especially when you come that way because you're trying to justify your wrongdoings. That's the only thing people try to do when they say God knows my heart. They try to justify why they didn't do what they were supposed to do and why they did what they did. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I don't know, folks. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, man, I'm sorry. That's good because you, you went right with the scripture that you put out this morning. <laughs> and, where you, and it was strength, strength to withstand. Yep. And, and that's the thing. When you are at your weakest, God is at his strongest on your behalf. And he Amen. gives you strength. What does it say? Amen. I can do all things through Christ. Which what strengthens, which strengthens me. me. Not I can do all things through my willpower and me. Because I strengthened me. No. Just like you said, he knew that we couldn't do it. He knew there was nothing that we could do. And just after all, somebody, you got to do all this other stuff to be more righteous. There's nothing that you can do. Just, as you said, so that means you're saying that what Jesus did, when Jesus made you righteous, that wasn't enough. Mm. So you have to do some more extra stuff in order for it. No. He is the finished work. What he did is more than enough. Amen. 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 You know where people get a lot of that at, right? where they think they have to just keep going more. People read scriptures. I'm going to go to Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians, Philippians 2 and 12. I'm going to read the King James on it first, okay? Amen. We're teaching, right? 
Amen. Amen. Right, so what people do is they read scriptures like this, and no one teaches them about these scriptures. And so they'll read something like this, and it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, this is Paul, Paul speaking, right? You've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So people hear that, and, they, and what happens is immediately you believe that you can work out your own salvation. You don't have a heaven or hell to put anyone, including you, in. You can't work out your own salvation. God knew this. How do we know that God knew this? Go to the next verse, verse 13. And this is the problem. People don't never read far enough. The next verse says, for it is God which works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So in other words, God is working in you, giving you the power and the desire to do his will. Amen. Why? Because you can't do it on your own. Amen. We've tried it. We failed at it time and time again. That was the problem with the old law. The law meant that in order for you to be even remotely righteous, in order for you to receive any of the blessings, you had to do things the right way. Well, God knew who we were. Just like that guy on that show can't get right, God knew he had a whole bunch of can't get right stuff here. <laughs> And because of that, he said, let me give y'all, let me give y'all the only can be right. There you go. Because you guys can't get right. And so he gave us Jesus, right? And when we, and when he gave us Jesus, and we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and now we're in him and he is in us, according to the Father, we are right. Just. Amen. 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 Praise God. And it's not because of what you do. You can't. It's some of the cravings, and, and you look at these people and on these shows, right? These uh, actual FBI shows and stuff like that. And there are some heinous things that people do. You know, like this white guy is being tried right now for these murders across the, you know, wherever, Florida, wherever. These guys have cravings, right? That unless you have Jesus in your life, you cannot fight against his cravings. You lose to them. Why? Because the enemy, demonic forces, need a host to operate here in this earth. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have Jesus, the blood of Jesus here, remember in the Old Testament when they took the blood and they put it on the doorpost? Mm -hmm. It's the same way. The blood of Jesus has to be on the doorpost of your heart. If you don't have the blood of Jesus there, what's going to happen is you can be spiritually uh, possessed, uh -huh. oppressed, yes. yep. depressed, yep. everything. And, do it, and, and you have cravings that you can't fight. All of us have cravings that we fight. That's why Paul said it's a constant battle. Our flesh and our spirits is a constant battle. But see, because we are spiritual, because we receive that blood of Jesus, it's over the doorposts of our hearts. We won. Amen. Amen. We won. Amen. What happened when that happened? All the people who had the blood on the doorposts, their children lived. All of us who didn't have that, that blood over the doorposts, their children died. The firstborn uh, first of sin. In the same way, we have the blood of Jesus on our hearts. And without the blood of Jesus, there are going to be cravings that we're going to have and we're going to lose to every single time. Mm -hmm. But when you have Jesus, just as the scripture says in Philippians 2 and 13, that he is working in us, giving us the power and the desire to do his will. Now the pressure is no longer on you. It's now on him. Amen. 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 Same time, same place, next week. Amen. We're going to continue on with this study. We want you to know that we love you here at Christian Freedom Ministries, and we thank God for you. If you're local, come on out. You know, you may have a question or two that you need to ask. We are here, we are obligated to answer your question by way of the word. Amen. Not by opinion, by way of the word. Amen. This is a no judgment zone here. Yep, yep. Doesn't matter what you've done. We don't care. 
Doesn't matter what you wear. Come on out anyway. Amen. Just be you. Be the best you that God made you to be. Don't come in here trying to be somebody else. Be you. And let's all just work together as the body of Christ. Amen. Remember this. Who the Son is set free is free indeed. Stay free out there. Amen.